ladies and gentlemen. It's the David St. James Show. How's everybody doing? Glad to see you all. Oh, glad to see you all today. Thank you very much. Trying to get on at nine o'clock every night. That'd be nice. Trying to get my mix right. everybody doing today? I'm so glad that you could see all of my mistakes live on the interweb. It's great. But I know you don't want any fake. You'd rather have a mistake than a fake. I know that for a fact. You'd rather see a real person than some fake up here with a fake smile. <laughs> you know my smile is never fake. So, this is the David St. James Show. Welcome. It's uh, all about Dave. And uh, I've created this beautiful studio and uh, with the uh, Nick Falchon provided the space. Thank, thank you, Nick. Great guy. Him and I will be hobnobbing with the upper crust at uh, Time Out later on this week. Friday, I think. So, uh, hope to see y'all there. You know, I just found out that 50% of my friends really don't like me at all. <laughs> so, I'm sure I'll see half of you guys there, too. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, today, on the show, since it's Sunday, I wanted to do something really cool. I'm going to take you down memory lane and play you some music uh, that I recorded when I was a kid. I was 14 years old. I found it on this phone, this old phone. And, uh, I, you know, I recorded it on a Fostex 4-track, cassette 4-track machine I bought from uh, City or Music City in Cherry Hill on Route 70. I think I paid like four hundred and like seventy-five dollars for this little cassette four-track. It was called a Vesta Fire. I remember. It was uh, pretty cool. But anyway, Chris Snyder from Del Ran, right across the street from the high school. I'm sure you remember him. He played keyboard. Mike Walker. He was uh, me, Dwayne, Mike Walker, you remember all them, Mike Walker from Dalrain High School. He was on bass on this. <laughs> and Dave McGarrigal from Edgewater Park uh, was on drums. This is uh, a song that Chris Snyder wrote the piano part for. And I wrote uh, the words. I think he came up with the idea with the concept. The song is it's called Dancer. It's about, uh, <laughs> we, me, me and Chris were such like bleeding hearts back then. We were such pussies, I'm sorry to say. But when it came to girls, like I <laughs> wanted to be with this girl so bad, but I didn't have the guts to you know, be with her. And she was dancing with somebody else. And I was like, well, I guess you're happy. So then I'm happy. It, it, terrible, terrible concept for a song. But here it is, it's called Dancer. Here we go. Recorded on Hartford Road, Bell Ran, right across from high school.
Does that sound like me? I was 14 years old. David St. James Production. David St. James Production in 1984, maybe? No, 86. Something like that. Pretty good. I was David Pepper back then. Julie, I love you. Thank you so much. You're my number one. Mike Walker on the bass. That cutout was because of the cassette player. Had a record button right next to the stop button. You try to press stop, but instead you press record, and it would record on the tape. It's recorded off of the cassette. I wrote all this music right here. Fourteen years old. Dance your own dream down the road. That dream's on the line for me. Yeah, dancer, you're nothing but a dream. I can't wait till I get my phone fixed and I can get call-ins. Like, I'd love to talk to Mike Walker, David Arnold, and Chris Snyder, the guys that recorded this with me back then. Pretty awesome, huh? You want to hear another one? <laughs> Do you want to hear one that we recorded? Okay, let me give you. Okay, hold on. All right, folks, <laughs> this is funny. I'm going to give you uh, the name of the the band, my band, our band. Back then was presents, not Christmas presents, but like a spiritual presence. That was the name of the band. And Chris and I were the primary songwriters. And we decided that every song had to have the word presence in it for some reason. We liked Rush and, you know, stupid geek, geek prog rock and stuff back then. But uh, we recorded, uh, this was our big hit. This was our biggest hit, I think. It's original. I wrote this one pretty much entirely myself. Excuse me. And we recorded this one at Mirror Sound Studio on Cinnamonson Avenue. I'm sure a lot of you remember Ken Force or Force, whatever the heck his name. I think he's in California. He's still got to check him out. Mirror Sound Studio. I think he took the whole thing out to California. And he's doing well still. He's still doing it. He produced a lot of recordings around here, guys. You guys remember. And he was cool, man. I took a class in that studio of offered by Burlington County College. I was like 13 or 14. My dad was like, Dave, look at, look at us. Uh, you can take a recording studio class uh, right over there. I was like, really? Yeah, let's do it. And my dad was always so supportive. Thanks, Pop. And he drove me there in a police car half the time. <laughs> and uh, I met some friends from Cinnamonson. All right, Cinnamonson people. Anyway, this was recorded there. Oh, that's people outside fireworks. I'm like, what the heck is that noise? It sounded like my PS. Okay, this is our biggest hit. It's called Misty Lonely Road. Here we go. This ain't it. <laughs> this is the end of the last song. Sorry. 
says Misty Lillira. Should be coming up. I try to EQ every song so you can hear it good. Here it comes. My Gibson Les Paul. There it is. Mike Walker on the bass. The first song we recorded it. And Mirror Sound. Of course, this is all a Vicente uh, copy of a copy of a copy. And then on the CD. That's me singing. 14 years old. Notes I hit, I can't, I can't do it. See what my world is like. Yeah. Hit it, Dave. I think I wrote the words. 
probably about 1988. Maybe in the 70s. Yeah, it's probably a sophomore or junior, I guess. I worked at Taco Bell <laughs> or Domino's Pizza. All the lies we strive to find Some security Yeah, baby. While we're listening, I'm going to take the camera and show you around a little bit. Lies we tell ourselves Just to make believe Just as I thought it was going all right When you showed me the open door Just when I thought There's that. <laughs> you never cared enough Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is David St. James, Chris Snyder, Mike Walker, and Dave McGarrigle, 1984. The band Presence, my original band when I was a kid. Shall we keep it going? What do you think? Not seeing any comments, so I'm just going to keep going with it. All right, here's one of our songs. Also recorded at Mirror Sound Studio. <laughs> this one's called, uh, I think it's Hades Lake. No, no, wait. No, this one's called Sad Despair. And Sad Despair, we made it one word. Yeah. Yeah. Walking through the darkness, feeling alone, see your breath in the air. We thought we were clever. You think nobody knows and nobody cares how you're feeling today. You, you want to cry out, but you don't know what to say. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, but it's just a passing train. Damn, I can still sing it. <laughs> Coming your way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. I wrote all this music, man. I was like fucking 14 years old. The 
Yes. I wish it was clearer recording about it. I couldn't say this now. I Enjoy the night as you gaze at the stars. Stop looking over, I'm sure. The answer's not far. You've been through this before. And you see it. I think I was a Triumph fan. I love a Triumph and Rush. I'm trying to say way too hard. Let's have it. Know the way. Well, that's your point of view. I love the like, Jeff Tate. Damn, there's that pause again. It's because the cassette tape that this was taken from was in Chris's the studio where we used to practice. The record button was right next to the stop button and Chris would hit record all the time instead of stop. Dave McGarrigle on drums. I love this part. I remember composing every set, every, every bit of this. This song I wrote about uh, that poem, Footsteps, where like, uh, hey, all the hard times in my life, but there was only one set of footsteps. Where were you? He said, I was carrying you. I was a sophomore in high school. This is it. We're playing it right now. Yeah, baby! I remember every second of that. It's amazing. Let's see what else we got. This, I'm so glad I found this broken old phone because it had all these songs in it. I just charged it up and I found it today. Which one's next? Let's see what's next. Keep it coming. Don't stop now. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Oh man, we got a lot. Here's Eye of the Storm. This was recorded by me on four track cassette. I think it's the first song we actually recorded with the four track. When you gotta go on, remember how we used to be in the island storm, yeah! You got the energy and a tough new class, like you feel it, though you wanna belong, then kick in the ass! Ain't no game we're playing with your mom! This is my voice. Shit, man. I hope like Delran people from like Brett Mullins and 
funny old guys. I hope you guys are gonna check this. I hope you guys are listening to this. Man. Ryan Kleiman. If it, tag the people that you know that that would probably remember this stuff, please. Please, that would mean a lot to me. Because this is it. I might lose it. I mean, I'm lucky I had this at all. So now we all have it. Enjoy. Yeah. Good. Man, I was fucking good. That's better than Eminem now. Gabe McGarrigle is like a real uh, pure. Okay, now we all take a solo. Mike. Chris didn't know what to do, Mike didn't know what to do, so I wrote the piano solo, and I wrote the bass solo. Cassette four track. That's not bad, man. Not bad. I'm, I'm pretty pretty impressed. That was okay. Here's another. Uh, this is a Mirror Sound recording studio. Ken Force or whatever his name was. It's, the beginning is cut off. This is recorded off of generation after generation of cassette tape, so it sounds like shit. Chris Snyder on piano. I remember high-speed dubbing these tapes, and I'm sure this is from a high-speed dub of like a normal cassette tape, which is pretty, pretty low quality. I really wish I had that master of Because I bet the, the actual analog track recording or 16 track recording probably pretty really impressive. If I could take that today and EQ it, man, that'd be something. This song here is about uh, me and Chris um, went for a walk late one night. He was going to show me this lake out across the street from Delray High School where the soybean fields were. There was like a lake back there. In the middle of the night in the summertime, it was a foggy, misty, spooky night. We went looking for this lake, we couldn't find it. Dropped. So, like, what happens is we went looking for this lake, but we couldn't find it. We got spooked out. Chris spooked me out, and we were crying home. I was so scared that we wrote a song about it. It's a horror song about the lake that turns evil in night. Anybody that goes there, their fears come alive. And this is the part where the snakes and the streets Every your fears are coming alive now to kill. I know every drunk fellow is The guy will drop some kiss drumstick in this one. So I don't know why we kept that. Why did we keep a tape where he dropped this thing? You'll hear it. Again, I think this is pretty much entirely my composition. I mean, anybody will tell me if I did. Yeah, that's wrong, but pretty much this is all me. Snyder might have 
Records. That's the last poem my dad got me for my eighth grade graduation. I was a sophomore in high school. I should have been a star, what the heck? What's this part here? Get down. And here's where the evil, the evil sneaks apart. I think I just learned augmented chords and tritones. <laughs> echo. Mike Ionary taught me how to fade in a guitar and use an echo to fade it out. <laughs> uh, here's where this this part is messed up right here. Uh, see? Why do we keep that? Why do we keep that? What the world is going to be calling the country? The record of the country? They burned in hell! Oh, did they, Dave? Let them burn. Again, another mistake. We paid money for studio time and we left with mistake. I don't get it. I was 14. That was Chris singing on me there. Nice, that was called Hades Lake. Uh, we, we like rush, and I, I mean, I, I just started getting into exit stage left. I loved it, and uh, so I, I was getting into... Okay, let's see, wait a minute. I think that's it. That's all of them? Oh, yeah, I guess that's all the uh, present songs I have. Wasn't that cool? Wait, is there any more? Oh, uh, you know what? I have one more song, I think, that I'll play for y'all. Uh... I think it's, uh, it's a, uh, Mike Ionieri, uh, recorded this one. Let's see, let me find it. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Here it is. Uh, oh yeah. This song was recorded at Mike Ionieri's studio in Cinnamons, and this was his first studio over on Raven. A lot of people don't know nothing about that. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Mike was probably maybe 17 or 18 when he mixed, when he recorded, nah, he was probably maybe 20, I don't know, I was probably like 17, but uh, this was, uh, Mike played drums on this, Mike Ionieri played drums on this, and he did the horn parts on the keyboard, I played the piano, bass, all the guitars, and I wrote the song. Jason Pasco gets a mention for uh, getting me started on the lyric. He wrote the first lyric. She taxes me. She makes me sweat. She makes me so confused. That was his line. So I'm gonna give credit where credits due. And it's fun. It's fun to recognize all the people. That, you know, I love this. This is so cool. Okay, here we go. This is uh, last song I'm gonna play for you today. This is a uh, Dave Peffer probably recorded uh, 1986. Six or eighty-seven, something like that. <clears throat> My guy near his studio. Here we go. I was swishing water in my mouth. Live drums.
over the times, for sure. That's like carbon. I had carbon. Carbon is E2 to O T. Good Marty. This is when I started to learn how to sing right here. Let's see, this is drum fill. I know I arranged all the horn parts. I'd like to play it. I like George Michael back there too. So close to the It's on. I was in The Stranger by Billy Joel. That's that was the, my influence for that song. That bass, you know, will we all? I was trying. To, I heard The Stranger. Uh, yeah, I was about 18 years old. My dad just had knee surgery when I recorded that. I remember he had a Nissan Maxima, which I smashed into a, a parked car. Okay, everybody. I guess uh, you're probably bored with my originals by now. My old ass originals. I don't think I have any more. Anyway, let's see. Oh, I probably do. Yeah, I do. I got a couple more. <laughs> I probably got a couple more. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Let's see. Come on. Um, hmm. I'm just looking for. Uh, no, I need it. I'm not playing nothing new. Just the stuff I did in high school. Don't have it? No? Okay, well, I guess that's probably it then today. Maybe. All right, then. We'll call it there. I'll be happy with that. We'll do it another time. I have all kinds of stuff uh, from the past. We're going to listen to um, uh, Matt uh, Capriati's music <laughs> that I produced with, uh, uh, what was his name? Robbins. What was his name? Robbins. Something Robbins. He used to have a recording studio, or he tried to have a studio. What was his name? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, Matt's music. I got all his stuff. We're going to listen to that. 
We're going to listen to some Dwayne Beatty music from Del Ran. We're going to listen to some TCO, that's Doug Busey, and uh, Dwayne and Eric Johnson and me. And uh, also Tom Gimble, Tom Gimble. I think he moved to uh, Texas or something. I got Jesse Riddle's music. <laughs> All kinds of stuff, man. I got Sharis Swartley. She recorded in my studio. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we're going to listen to and stuff I produced, and I won't have any copyright problems, and this is fun. So, I'm enjoying it. So. So, folks, uh, I just want to say that, um, you know, a lot of people try to start shit all the time, and uh, those people that try to start shit are probably shitty themselves. So if you find yourself starting shit, you might want to check yourself. Um, oh, don't want to forget my sponsor. Today, this program was brought to you by Guzzler's Beer. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Guzzler's Beer. Comes in two sizes. White trash 16-ounce bottle and uh, ghetto 40-ounce. No, wait. White trash 16-ounce can, sorry. And ghetto 40-ounce bottle. Either way, it's wonderful. Drink it after dinner. Drink it with dinner. If you drink it before, you won't need any dinner. Guzzler's beer, ladies and gentlemen. It's good. Mm. Folks, I'm going to start getting to work on my website a little more. I do have a website. It's ducktapedave.com. D-U-C. Tapedave.com. And uh, you can email me from there. You can also hit up my Patreon and give me a tip. That would be great. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to do the... Uh, you know, PayPal and all that stuff, because dollar here, dollar there would help. Also, uh, I'm going to start making t-shirts again pretty soon, so put in your orders now. I know I owe one to uh, Steve Grello. <laughs> I got a couple orders. But, uh, let me show you the t-shirts real quick. Well, I'm going to try to get some more cameras in here pretty soon. This is tough, man. I'm using this old ass laptop. <laughs> Look, everything's wired up like this. Look. I gotta carry this thing around like it's a oxygen tank. Thank you all. Thanks to Nick. Thank you, everybody that watches. Thank you, everybody that comments. Thank you all for your love, for your support. Appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. That was that was fun for me. Take, take care. I'll see you soon.